Welcome to a new video. In this video, we will discuss another interesting topic, which is the maximum power transfer. We will see how we can transfer the maximum power from a source to the load where we use a matching network in between. We will see shortly, step by step, how we can do that. In this case, we will use a transformer for this and also verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, our objective is the following. Design a matching network to have a maximum power transfer to the load. In that case, the load is an impedance, so it has a complex expression. So we have a source which is connected through a matching network to be determined shortly to the load. And the source is given by this expression. We have the source voltage 400 cosine 2 pi 10 to the power 4 T volts. So we have a frequency of 10 kilohertz and an amplitude or so the peak value is 400 volts. The source impedance is also a series RL circuit so you see here the RS and its associated inductor reactance here XL of S. We see also the values for the source impedance. Now for the load we have also a series RL circuit so the R and the XL so the reactance of that inductor and the values for the load are shown here so 36 ohms here and 10 micro -Henries for the part of the load. Now we like to make that matching network so that we have the power transfer, maximum power transfer from the source to load. Now that is then given in more detail here. So we again see here the source impedance and the load impedance and we see also our load current here. So how do we then choose this matching network? Of course there are many different options. So in this case we will go for a transformer. So we can say, let's go for the calculations first and see how we can do that. Now first, the source impedance in more detail. The source impedance is given by Z of S, which is a series combination of this RS and the reactance of this uh, inductor, what we have here, LS. That's given here. And we know what the value of that reactance is, which is omega times LS. So we can just substitute here the values. We know what omega is, which is, of course, our input frequency 2 pi times 10 to the power rate uh, 4 radians per second you substitute here the values we also know that we have an ls of 100 micro henry so this is 10 to the power minus 4 so when you do a calculation here you get here 4 plus in exact form j 2 pi ohms now for the load impedance you have a similar situation a different values for of course the resistor and the inductor Again, this XL is then calculated using the omega L. So we just substitute here again the values, same omega. And then you get here 36 plus J 0.2 pi ohms. Okay. Now we now use a transformer as a matching network for this design. Again, there are many other options, but in this case, we will use a transformer. We'll see how we can also use that in our design here. So our circuit here will be then more detailed like so so we have again our source voltage source impedance and the load here now we have in between this transformer which is the primary and the secondary windings here so n1 and n2 will be then determined shortly also that's just the ratio of this transformer windings okay how do we do that let's see also in more detail how that looks like so we have here now rs and ls that's the source impedance r and l that's for the load and we have again our input source voltage. Now we can say if I want to have the maximum power transfer, we know from our previous discussions using the Tevenin equivalent circuit, there's a very really powerful method to do this maximum power transfer problems. We know that we have a source impedance which must be also equal to the complex conjugate of this impedance looking here. And I call this in this case Z in, so input impedance here. So this value must be then the complex conjugate of that value that we have here. So maximum power transfer. So for this, we require, this is the condition we need to have. Z in is the complex conjugate value of this Zs, which is then actually shown here. So this is Zs. So that means Z in must be 4 minus this J 2 pi. So that is just the inverting sign of the imaginary part of our source emittance. But the reflected impedance we are talking about here, of course, because this is the primary side of our transformer. So this secondary part of our transformer will be transformed or reflected to the primary side. That is given by this expression. This is a general expression we see mostly when you do transformer calculations. So Z in 
is equal to 1 over the ratio, in this case n2 over n1 squared, times the ZL, which is the series combination of this resistor and the inductor here, which is actually shown here. Okay, that means we need to make this reflect to the primary side. Now we can just substitute here what we have, 36 here plus J0.2 pi, and that is actually what we have as an equation we can use. And there are of course some unknowns here like N2 and N1, so how can we proceed? We can say let's make this N1 just 1, you know, just a ratio, of course it will be a ratio, but we can just stick to 1. And then we have this simple expression, more simple to work with, so we have then 1 over the N2 squared, times this expression for the z load. Okay, then we can set the following equation because we need the z in which is 4 minus j 2 pi ohms and also this expression. So these two must be equal to each other. So let's equate them to each other. This left side is equal to the right side. Now in order to have this equation equal to each other we need to have the imaginary and the real values equal to each other. So in this case the real value is 36 over this n2 squared that is just 4, because that is the right side, which is a real value. And then 0 0.2 pi over n2 squared. And that is the minus 2 pi. This is interesting, so let's see what we have. Now we have now here n2 squared will be then 36 over 4. So n2 squared will be then 9, and then you have an n2, which is then just 3. But the Second part will not have any solution because this will be a negative value and then you cannot create a negative value from a square of a real uh, expression. So we don't have any solution here. So if you just move one like this, we cannot go. So only a transformer is not sufficient. So we need to do more. Again, since we have a negative imaginary part, which is in this problem, that requires actually is referring to a capacitive term in the circuit. So in this load, we need to add a capacitive term. That can be, of course, a parallel or a series combination. It doesn't matter. If, of course, it depends on the practical situation. But in this case, we will make a series combination of the capacitor here. So we will change our situation in this circuit by adding a capacitor. So insert the capacitor in series with the load. That's the choice we will make here in order to create this negative real part of the, I mean the imaginary part of our uh, input impedance here. So this circuit will change to that circuit. So the only change is really that C here. You see that that C is now inserted here in series. So again now new Z in, this is the new Z in here, will be then reflected the primary side is this. So you can, you can now see here that we have a resistor again, the reactance of this inductor, but also the reactance of this capacitor, of course that's a minus J. That is the capacitor effect. Now we can of course write this in a more convenient way like J and then put these two together in parentheses and then you have this expression. Again we set N is equal to 1 and just proceed and let's see what we have. So we can say this expression is what we have from here, of course, using this n1 is equal to 1. We know what, what r is, well, what r xl is, because that is what we have discussed here. And we also know what the reactance of a capacitor is, which is 1 over the omega c, and this is omega, 2 pi times 10 to power 4, and then we have the c here. So this expression has only the n2 as an unknown, and of course the capacitor c, so two unknowns. But we can set again the following equation because this needs to be equated to that equation we just had, which is 4 minus j2 pi. Because you can see that here also, z in must be z s complex conjugate. And z s is here, so we need to make that negative, only that part, and that's shown here. So we see here, equation left and right hand side for the real and imaginary parts must be equal to each other. So we can say again, 36 over n2 squared, same uh, situation, must be 4. And this one, the complete thing here, which out of this just j, must be then minus 2 pi. Okay, now this one is easy because that's again the same result. So n2 squared must be then 9, so the n2 will be then just 3. So we need to have a ratio of 1 to 3 here. So if this is a 1, that will be a 3. If this is of course 100, then this must be 300, like so. Okay, now we know our n2. So we can substitute here the n2. So n2 squared will be 9. 
And now we have here in this equation only one unknown, which is our capacitor. Now, if I now multiply the left and the right hand side by 9, I have this expression here. And if I now move this 0.2 pi to the right side, I have now this minus 18.2 pi is equal to that one. Now, I can, of course, now divide out this minus sign so that those cancel each other out. And I have now 2 pi times 10 to the power 4. C is equal to 1 over this, of course, without this minus sign. Now, I can calculate the C pretty easily by saying C is equal to 1 over this 2 pi times 10 to the power 4 times 18.2 pi. Now, if you do the calculation here, you get very close to 300, I mean 278.35 nanofarads. So we have determined our ratio of the transformer and our capacitor we need to here have in series with our load. Okay, let's bring everything here and now check the result in the simulations. This is the plot for the simulations in this circuit. What we see here is the source current, which is actually the current flowing here. The load current, that is the current flowing here, and also the V load, which is the voltage at this node, and also the Vs, which is, of course, from the situation here. We have 400 cosine 2 pi 10 to the power 4t. You see also this is indeed a cosine because this is actually going up and down with the 400 up and minus 400, and the frequency is indeed 10 kilohertz. Let's see also the circuit in the TNI spice we have used. This is again the circuit, the voltage source here. 4 ohms and 100 micro henrys for our RS and LS for our source impedance. You see the transformer, which is in this case purely ideal, so there are no non ideal effects. TR is the transformer ratio, in this case 3, because the N1 over N2 was 1 over 3, so N2 over N1 is 3, so that's the ratio. We have here resistor 36 ohm from the equation, from the question 10 micro henrys here, and we have added our capacitor here which is more accurate to this value so 278.355 nanofarads now let's now look at the circuit in more detail using our equivalent circuit theorem now we have our source voltage here source impedance which has now the source current and this is now the reflected impedance we have used which is the z in which is going in here so looking from here into the transformer primary side. This IS can be calculated using the source voltage and the series combination of these two impedances. And that's actually shown here. So the IS source current is Vs over the Zs plus Z in. We know Vs is given in the phasor representation 400 phase 0 degrees and the Zs is 4 plus J2 pi and the Z in was then the complex conjugate of that Z in, Zs I mean and that is for minus J2 pi. And then we have 400 and the phase of zero degrees over eight because that's only four and four what we have left here because the imaginary parts will cancel each other out. Then we have 400 over eight, which is 50 with the phase of zero degrees amps. Is this also what we see in the simulation? Now let's see that also here. We have here an IS, which is the source current, 50 amps indeed, and also zero degrees as we have it also in the calculation, so this is indeed correct. We also see that in the plot here, because this is now the IS, which is our green plot for the source current, and the blue one was our input. So they are exactly in phase, so there is also indeed zero phase difference between the VS and the IS. Now there is more, we can also see what the load current must be. Looking at the ratio of the transformer, we know that this current will be divided by the ratio of N2 over N1, which is in this case 3. So you divide 50 over 3, and this is actually what you see here, and then you get here approximately 16.67 amps. And that's actually what you also see here. We also see that the phase of the load current is 0, which is then in phase with our source voltage, and that is a characteristic of a maximum power transfer. Now, looking now at the average power delivered to this load, the average power delivered to the load is delivered to the ohmic part of our load. That is actually this part, which is 36 ohms. So that can be calculated using this formula. PR is equal to I load peak, that is the load current, the peak value squared, times the resistive part of this load over 2. In this case, we need to use the RMS values. So that is actually the reason for making this squared and then divided by 2. That's effectively how you do the calculation using the RMS values. Now 50, 50 over 3, which is our 
load current as a peak value square that times the 36 ohmic part of our load over 2 that will give us exactly 5 kilowatts and that is the power we deliver to the load for this situation all right with our example considering the maximum power transfer from the source to the load using a matching network and that is in this case a transformer we also have added to the load a capacitor in series to create a maximum power transfer don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video